hello y'all and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another month of monthly hits and misses i can't believe we're already two months in on 2020 so obviously monthly hits and misses is an opportunity for me to look back on what i was using amidst the month of february and discuss things that really stood out to me as something that i'm like oh i had been loving this shiz like nobody's business and some things that i wasn't really impressed with for one reason or another we've got one thing from octoly we've got a bunch of other things y'all know how these videos go so let's just get on right into it now obviously we're going to start off with my sing song thing two songs that i have been vibing with this month and for any of y'all who follow me on the twitters and on the snapchat and all that you will know that January and February were kind of struggle months for me. You know, we were dealing with a lot with like the depression and the mood swings and the wanting to sleep all the time. So one of the songs that I had been just, you know, was helping empower me and move me forward is Fight Like a Girl by Emily Autumn. Now I will leave the music video as well as just one with words. I will say tread into Emily's music. Um, a little bit lightly. Uh, this song is definitely one of her more radio friendly pieces, I would have to say. So, but it has been really just like, you know, empowering and like get up and go and let's do this. And I have been just kind of vibing with her music on a whole recently. Then the second one is from one of my absolute favorite bands ever, Within Temptation. This is a song from their album, The Unforgiving. The song is entitled Iron. And kind of like with Fight Like a Girl, it's just this like really get up and at them and go. it's very, the chorus is so powerful both musically and lyrically that it's one of those things that I listen to when I'm feeling a little bit down on myself, feeling like, you know, I'm not doing as well as I should. This thing kind of just like perks me up and gets me like, yeah, I'm so good, ready to go. So that's what I've been really into music wise recently. Like I said, I will leave everything linked down below. Then let's talk about something that I have, I don't think, ever talked about on my channel before. I was reached out to by a independent indie uh, alternative jewelry brand called Alternative Finch. And they were like, she's based in the UK. And they were like, hey, would you like to like look at some of our pieces and whatever? And so I went on their site and looked at them. I was like, yeah. Yeah, this looks like stuff I can get down with. And so she was kind enough to send me a few pieces, one of which I am actually wearing in my hair right now. These are hair clips that she's made. You've just got the comb and then she's added onto it the bat wings here and then the stoning. It's all wire wrapped, very nicely made. I really was intrigued by these because I feel like I don't do a lot with my hair. So I was like, let's add, let's add a little something something and I love the like art deco bat design going on. Then the other thing she sent over was this pair of earrings, which are absolutely gorgeous. They are, I hope you can see right there, they are, you know, reverse and forward moon phases. These do come in a couple different, I don't know which ones are in stock, but she has silver and I'm pretty sure she also has black. This was the only color that was available when she sent me mine, but they're just so pretty and so like dainty and beautiful while still being nice and statement making. Like they add just a little bit of a little bit of like witchy etherealness going on with them. And her price points are also really nice. I have looked at other, you know, like indie, independent, smaller band brands for alternative jewelry and they're usually fairly pricey, but her prices were, I was like, okay, all right, I can see myself buying that. She does do these gorgeous, they're, they're like made out of lace and they're these chokers. And then she adds embellishments on to just this one complete piece of lace and she had a bunch of different styles and everything like that. Then the last thing she sent over was this beautiful cameo piece. She has a bunch of different ones of these different, um, cameo just 
cameos. This one here is a conjoined, co-joined, conjoined skeleton twins going on there. It's got all the nice little crystals, the purple. She does have these in a bunch of different styles of this, but also in a bunch of different colors of the metal. And the hook closure for the necklace is this really nice toggle, with I, which I thought added a nice little touch compared to if it had just been a traditional lobster claw. So this piece is something that I thought was just absolutely adorable. I have actually worn worn it with this sweater before. I've worn it with one of my um, Killstar dresses that has a matching bolero. You actually will see this in the outfit video when that goes up. But it was just really sweet of her to send these pieces over and I have been absolutely loving each and every one of them. Obviously all of her stuff, Facebook page, Etsy, Instagram, all of that will be linked down below. All right, let's start off on a positive note. Oh my goodness, when this released, I can't tell you how many of y'all were all like, girl, did you see Natasha Denona just released another little blush palette? Girl, I know you on that low buy and I hate to be devil's advocate, but look what just got released. Oh my goodness, are you going to get that new Natasha Denona blush palette? And I'm like, what, what, what? And this is something that I did purchase. Obviously, that's why it's here. But this is the Natasha Denona Love Glow Cheek Palette. And yeah, Y'all, y'all know that if there is a formula that I have become a complete sucker for, it is the Natasha Denona Cream. Oh my goodness. If she released a range of single cream blushes, I would be down. And y'all know I don't even like cream products. Like, typically I am so against cream products, but hers are just formulated so beautifully that they just always, they just look so effortless and beautiful on the skin. Whenever I'm going for like my no makeup makeup days, I always reach for one of these palettes. I've been using the crap out of this blush right here. I love this diamond powder. I use that as kind of like a blush topper. And then I love this super glow, which I use as a blush. The only thing that's a little bit eh for me is the glow impact powder because I feel like you kind of have to dig on in at it. It's a little bit faint. It's a little bit subtle. And you got to work a bit to kind of get that ka-cha-cha-cha. Although I do understand that this is supposed to lend itself to a more natural, more dewy, more healthy complexion. And all the little thingies inside move. I mean, I just about lost my mind. I was like, look, honey, it moves. But absolutely super happy and super pleased with this. I continue to hope that she releases more shades of this because I just, I just, I love these palettes so much. And something that's kind of like a middle ground, eh, you know, it's just kind of like, I don't know. A couple of y'all had recommended that I start trying some night sleeping masks, you know, something that's really gonna just like shellac in all the moisturizer and the creams and stuff like that and, and make my face keep it together during the night so it can look all nicey nice the next day. And one that's really, really raved about is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. Now this is really nice. Uh, I used it. This is actually the mini size. I highly recommend getting the mini size because you get a crap ton of product in here and it's like half the price of the big one. But it's just kind of like this gel whatever congealed snot sort of formulation. And I used it and I noticed that it made my face so plump and baby butt smooth and nice and hydrated and supple. But I don't know if this is just me or if it's just a pet peeve of mine. You know, after I do my whatever, I will occasionally, you know, touch my face. I know that's a no-no. But I notice what this does is it kind of sits on the skin and then if you go to touch it, it kind of peels and beads and just kind of sloughs away. Like it doesn't completely absorb into the skin and then if you do any kind of like this motion, it just, it comes off. I've tried it with a couple different moisturizers, with some other things, and just no matter what I use it with, this tends to just kind of like, it. it's the same thing that happened to me with the um, Boschia Cactus Water whatever moisturizer, where it would go in and it would feel really nice and beautiful, but then you would, you know, and then it would just kind of 
peel away. So I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. You know, I've been occasionally using it. I should probably honestly try to return it. I like the effects it gives to me, but I hate that whole just peeling and beating away. I'm like, no, I want you to stay on my face. You was expansive. You need to stay here. So I'm not entirely sure what's up with that. If any of y'all have used this and you've experienced that same whatever or how you use it to keep it from doing that, definitely let me know down below because I really like what this does. I just hate that what the other thing that it does. Then something that ended up being really good for me, this is the Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Moisturizer. When this got released, there were so many really good reviews about it. A couple of y'all were like, girl, I just tried this. It has changed my life. I was like, okay, all right, you know, let's give it a go. It is a very Thick. This is definitely for me a nighttime moisturizer like if any of y'all are familiar with the Tatcha the dewy skin cream that level of like thickness This is even thicker than that like your girl is thick with two capital C's But as a heavy-duty nighttime moisturizer this is so nice. I have noticed an improvement in my hydration levels here. And also I've noticed um, a lot less redness as well as a lot less um, texture breakouts in this department. Because here and here are where I get my worst just textury little bumpy bits. And after starting putting this into my skincare routine, I have noticed that a lot less. You do only need the little like titchiest bit of this. I just kind of boop, you know, and kind of put it on those high point areas and then gently smooth that shiz out and it is just... Why do I smell things? But it is just such a nice moisturizer. I'm so glad so many of y'all recommended I try it because it has become one of my new favorites. This is definitely one that I would say is worth the money. And the packaging is all kind of nifty greeny yellow acrylic. So your girl lives for an aesthetic. Then something else that was just a random hit. Once again, I have been trying to do a night sleeping mask and so many of y'all recommended this shiz. This is my first product from Drunk Elephant. This is the F-Balm Electrolyte Water Facial Mask Hydratant. 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 Mm. Soak plus revive. This I absolutely love. It absorbs so beautifully into the skin. Skin. And one thing I love about this, when I first got it, I was using way too much. You need just like a half a pump of this and you just boop, 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 and then you smooth it out and it will cover your entire face. And it just leaves your skin being all kinds of supple and healthy and hydrated and it makes it feel like a baby's butt. It is so smooth and so hydrating and so light on the skin. Like it's really like it's got, it's an intense moisturization, but it doesn't feel thick or heavy. It's very lightweight, but super powerful and good at its job. So I'm kind of not sure what I was expecting with this because this is the first Drunk Elephant product I've tried. And I'm pretty sure Drunk Elephant is one of those super hyped up skincare. I mean, every, I feel like every skincare brand at Sephora is like super hyped up. Everyone's like, oh my goodness, it's changed my life. And the product that changed their life just happens to be like $78. But this is something that I really, really like. I do want to try and look into some more less expensive night sleeping masks because, you know, it's expensive. I'm going to see how long it lasts me because that usually helps me gauge you know, how likely I am to repurchase something. You know, if it's a $50 item that lasts me four to five months, yeah, sure, I'll spend that every four to five months. But if it's only lasting me like a month and a half, not so much. But so far, I have been really, really liking this. Then something that I'm sadly was not a big fan of. You know, I've been looking for cruelty-free makeup wipes. So one of y'all recommended me the Clean Beauty Coconut Water Hibiscus Face Wipes. And, I mean, these are... Basically, baby 
wipes. I mean, the wipe has the exact same consistency. They smell like baby wipes and these just, they removed my makeup, but I felt like I had to use more than when I've been using just the Neutrogena ones that I'm trying to use up. And I also felt like these left me feeling really dry, like really stripped, really, you know, because usually with like my skincare and everything, I'll remove my makeup and my skin will still be relatively okay. But these just my face I was like I have to hydrate my face is so like I need to quench the need for moisture you know like immediately after taking my makeup off these were just they didn't take off as much as I would have liked I had to use more of them and then the fact that they left my face feeling really dry and stripped this is something I would not recommend and not something that I will be repurchasing um I've been using these to like kind of clean other makeup things and clean but I have not put them to my face again. We might as well get the Octoly item out of the way. Y'all know your girl is on that low buy, so kind of to, to quench the, the need for whatever, I'll occasionally look on Octoly and be like, what can I get for free to like kind of quench that need for something new? And y'all know I absolutely love getting skincare. This is the Mamonde Floral Hydro Cream. Gifted to me, complimentary from Mamonde for review purposes. Now, I will will say right off the bat with this cream, it has a relatively um, powerful floral scent. I understand the whole floral thing is what it's banking on, but it is definitely perfumed. Like smelling this, it feels, it smells like a perfume, like something you'd put on and be like, oh, I smell like a floral garden now. So people who are sensitive to that type of thing, definitely take that into consideration. It doesn't seem to linger after you put it on your face, but while you are putting it on your face and your skin, it does, you can smell it and it's not subtle. But other than that, this is a gel type cream, which seems to be something that my skin reacts really well to, especially as a daytime moisturizer. You don't need a lot of this at all, kind of like the Milk Makeup one. I just kind of right there and then boop, 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 boop. And then that's enough to just really hydrate my whole face. And this is something that I really like. I'm actually currently comparing this one. I've been using it on half of my face. And then on the other half, I'm using the Tatcha the Water Cream because they are pretty much um, identical in consistency and what they do to my face. So obviously stay tuned for that expensive skincare video. So I have found that this is very very similar to that Tatcha one at a about half the cost. This one I believe is in the $30 range and it is really nice. It's very smoothing. It's very hydrating. It's very fresh. It goes really, really well under makeup. This is the, the moisturizer that I've been using under my makeup and it has done really, really well. This is one that I would recommend. I am going to be talking about it and ranking it in that skincare video. So definitely stay tuned for that. But as for now, I've been really enjoying this one. Then another positive, which I'm pretty sure I've talked about before. You guys all know that I've pre-filmed. So sometimes videos where I talk about similar products kind of like, like mesh in together. And I'm like, did I talk about that in the favorites or was it a makeup worth the money? What, I mean, what was it? But those are the Kat Von D lip vinyls. I have reviewed these. I will leave that down below. What's funny about these, well, well it's, it's not really funny about these. It's funny about the situation. You know that my love and my fervor for Kat Von D has kind of been on the downslide for all of y'all who have commented on my The Fall of Kat Von D video and were like, girl, you called it. And I was like, Thank you, bless you, kind humans. But ever since that, I've been kind of like, eh, on her products, and in all honesty, I have not been as in love with the Kat Von D product in so long than as much as I'm in love with these. These are such a fantastic formula. They take the beautiful opacity of a liquid lipstick, but it doesn't fade, it doesn't feather, it doesn't bleed. They just stay on your lips. So absolutely beautiful. They make your lips 
look extra juicy while still delivering a really nice, you know, just, it, they're, they're so opaque, but they're not streaky. They're beautiful. They wear gorgeously. They make your lips all kinds of nice and plump. I really wish and I hope that the brand takes this formula and runs with it and gives us a whole shade range like take all of the liquid lipsticks and those colors and bring it to us in this formula, please and thank you. Because I just absolutely love how these look on the lips. I have reached for this one, which is Lolita. I have reached for it a myriad of times. If my lips ever look not matte, it's probably because I'm wearing these or the Patrick Ta lip creams. Because those two things are currently two of my absolute favorite lip products right now. Highly, highly recommend these. They are amazing and probably one of the best things that brand has released in the past year, year and a half, maybe even two years. Then something just a little bit fun right here. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina Mini Pro Pigment Palette Volume 3. Now this release, it was just kind of like, what? What? All right, all right, okay, all right, I guess. You know, Norvina is one of those brands that suffers from just kind of like, all right, let's put it out there and see what happens. But I think this is absolutely beautiful. Maybe not all together. You know, I understand I'm not as fancy fancy. I'm not as creative as some other people people, YouTubers. So I usually end up using this palette in conjunction with another palette. Now it does have, I will say, it does have a pressed glitter, which y'all know how I feel about that. But I have found with this one that if I take it and just tap, tap, tap a little bit of it over an existing shimmer on my eyes, it looks so beautiful. It looks so pretty, pretty. And for some reason, it's just a less offensive formula than other glitters I have tried. It stays there. You do want to have a little bit of like a like a, an existing shimmer or something like that for it to really adhere to. But it is just this beautiful wash of that like peachy, pinky, greeny, gold glitter. And I mean, this shimmer right here is absolutely stunning. Stunning. It's this blue green gorgeousness. I love this shimmer here, which is very reminiscent to the Kat Von D uh, Metal Crush Highlighter uh, Single Shadow in Thunderstruck. And I absolutely adore the mattes. This pink is gorgeous, the blue, the green. You know, I have used each of these shades in conjunction with some kind of look, and I've been really, really happy with how they blend, how they act, and how they work with other palettes and other eyeshadow formulas. I don't think it's necessarily like a necessary palette. It's not something that's going to be an end-all be-all, but I got it and I think it has been working really beautiful with a bunch of other palettes that I've got. And this is definitely one that I'm gonna consider taking with me in conjunction with another palette because I do absolutely love the formula of these mini palettes. I would honestly say that the formula of the three minis is a formula that I like better than the large ones? I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I absolutely love these little ones. But there we have it for that month of hits and misses. Definitely let me know how you feel about me talking about stuff like the jewelry and the music and other things that I get because when I don't have the time to do a completely dedicated video about something or I don't have enough content for that, this is really like the easiest way for me to interject it into my channel. So definitely let me know how you feel about that sort of thing. I know some people can get kind of like, yeah, you know, are you biased? Are you whatever? You know, I try to be as absolutely unbiased as I can and I only want to talk about something if I do really love it, like these things here. But obviously I try to take y'all's consideration and thoughts into to mine, so do let me know down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and as always, keep it real. Mwah!